This is a really compact little camera that still manages to house a stabilized APS-C size sensor. It's well built and all metal. It has a stealthy matte finished coating which is suitable since most use it mainly for street photography. comes with a USB-C charger and a little wrist strap, which I think is a nice touch by Ricoh. It has enough buttons and dials to satisfy most users, and unlike its predecessors, it's equipped with a touchscreen. You can use it to select focus points, shoot, go through menus and so on. Personally, I find more use for a touchscreen on cameras with a tiltable display, but I have used it from time to time. An example is to replace back button focus. When I'm in snap mode, I used to have the back button set as push to focus, just in case I needed it, but didn't want to turn the mode dial to a preset with autofocus or change it manually. Now that's been replaced by the touch. At any given moment when shooting with snap, I can touch the screen and an autofocus point appears. I can then half press and shoot. Afterwards, it immediately returns to its snap distance. In manual focus, it lets me touch and autofocus to set a new distance. By toggling the wheel, I quickly return to my previous setting. The touch display's visibility struggles a little in bright sunlight at the normal brightness setting, but given the lens and my preferred focus mode, it doesn't matter much to me. The lens is an 18mm f2.8 prime lens, making it about 28mm equivalent in full frame terms. Which is yet another reason why it's so loved by street shooters. Things happen quickly on the street and with the focal length you don't need exact framing. Most of what you see will be in frame anyway. Therefore a viewfinder is less useful or being able to see the display clearly compared to a camera with longer lenses. The lens is sharp, and I mean extremely sharp. And with the GR Mark III's new 24 megapixel sensor, it gives you a lot of cropping power. Again, making a viewfinder or screen less needed. At the time of review, the camera has yet to get a lens profile in Lightroom, which means you need to do it manually or in camera by shooting JPEG or doing an in camera raw development. The later is also the way to go if you want to keep the built-in positive film profile, which I find very pleasurable. You can easily transfer the images to your phone, raw files included. The camera is jam-packed with features and it's one of the most customizable camera lines I know of. In my review of the GR Mark II, I had an example showing that you could turn off the light around the power button. Here I will give another example that shows just how well you can customize stuff besides the modes and button functions. When I started shooting with it, I found myself often switching between two metering modes. The multi-segment and the for the GR Mark III exclusive highlight weighted metering mode. After choosing the new mode, the camera didn't remove the menu overlay when half-pressing the shutter. Not even when shooting. At first it bugged the hell out of me. Then, digging into the menu, I discovered that I could turn it off to make it work just like on most cameras. But that had me thinking maybe it could be useful. And sure enough, after leaving it at default for a week or so, I realized that it's actually an awesome feature that makes switching back and forth between the modes quicker. Speaking of the highlight weighted metering mode, if you follow my channel you know that I have loved that feature in several cameras before and always put it as a negative when a camera lacks it. It's basically an automatic ETTR or exposed to the right, which you then can control the intensity of with the exposure compensation. I absolutely love that feature and I'm so glad it's made its way into this model.
staying on the subject of customization, many have asked me about my three setups and the focus zones I achieve. So I thought I would run through them step by step, but since it's so boring to watch, I will upload it in a separate video. I will leave a link in the description as soon as it's done. As you have gathered by now, I don't use autofocus all that much. I use snap and my preset manual, which the camera lets me name so I don't forget which is which. And that's the third reason why a viewfinder or a tiltable display isn't as needed. I know where my focus is anyway, I don't need to see it. Instead I keep my eye on the scene and the subject. And when I want to use autofocus, it's quickly acquired. One more thing that makes this camera stand out for stealthy shooting is the mechanical leaf shutter. It is very, very quiet. The leaf shutter also means that you can sync a flash at pretty much any speed, even if it's not high sync speed compatible. Any old crappy vintage flash will do. But sadly the GR Mark III has lost its internal flash. Speaking of, we might as well go through the negatives of this camera, because there are a few, and they are absolute deal breakers if you go by the online drama, mostly created by people that had never even touched the camera. So I will skip things that aren't exactly issues or straight up fake news, and also things that might have happened to people but not to me, making it irrelevant for me to comment on. Instead let's talk about some real negatives that actually impact my shooting. The battery life is noticeably shorter than the GR Mark II, no question about that. But I can give you some happy news. I used it on a recent vacation to Copenhagen, I used it from 9 in the morning until 10 at night, I took no special steps to conserve power, screen brightness was at default, stabilization on etc. I chimped, I played with settings, you name it. When I came home I had captured over 300 shots and my single battery was still showing over 50%. For me that's enough. Of course I would have loved to have it as long as the GR Mark II or longer, but it's not enough of an issue to outweigh the positives of this camera. And neither is not having a flash. Since external flash is the only option on the GR Mark III, I might as well go off camera, where if we're honest, the flash belongs in the first place. But since we don't have a built-in camera flash anymore, I needed a small trigger as well. Which of course led me to the Q trigger. From there I didn't need much time to realize that I might as well go for the Q20 Mark II as well. The trigger and receivers are tiny, they are rechargeable, sadly not by USB-C, and I can use them with pretty much any flash for some off-camera fun. The Q20 Mark II is even more convenient since it fires even without the receiver. And can quickly be snapped onto the trigger. How cool is that? This way I can carry just this little kit and get both on and off camera flash, and if I want to use multiple flashes, it's just as easy. The camera shoots HD video, which is fine, sadly no full manual control, but no one was planning on doing any long advanced video shooting with this anyway. The stabilization, which does wonders for stills, all the way down to one second exposures, is a bit wobbly at times when filming close-ups. The colors looks excellent. The stabilization comes in very handy in low light, another aspect where the camera takes a big step forward compared to the GR Mark II. Normally higher resolution means worse low light, but this sensor and processor can be pushed very hard with a noise that many will find pleasing and grainy. I would stay at 1600 on the GR Mark II and use 3200 when needed. Now I really don't hesitate going 6400. And good low light capabilities of course means excellent dynamic range as well. 
Here we see an image of a lake where I easily could expose to preserve the bright sky without blowing a single highlight, and still have loads of detail in the much darker trees and even down at the bottom below the very clear water. If this isn't enough dynamic range for you, then I suggest skipping pocket cameras altogether. The new image quality means that the files have become larger, but so has the capacity per dollar in SD cards, so it evens out. Speaking of SDs, one feature that I absolutely love is the internal memory. Yep, you heard me right, a good old-fashioned internal memory, good for 40 RAW files. Next time you have an SD inserted, you can easily copy them to the card in camera. Perfect for this type of always ready grab and go kind of camera. It really is that one camera that's always with me. It lets me capture everything and nothing. It also encourages me to shoot whenever something catches my eye. It could be just some simple reflection or a beam of light. Images that I would think not even worth the hassle of taking off the lens cap on my bigger cameras now gets captured. And who knows, one of them might become something to be proud of. Now let's talk a little bit about post. When reviewing the GR Mark II, my top tip for editing was to skip Lightroom and use Capture One. Because the difference was night and day. No matter what I did, the Capture One images always came out 10 times better. Now I'm not really seeing it anymore. The only thing I seem to always need to do when first starting to edit is to warm them up a bit. Other than that, I edit like normal. Oh, and if I want the filmic look, I definitely need to lower the sharpness because this sensor and lens combo is a knife. So let's sum up. The Ricoh GR2 was my favorite digital compact camera of all times. This is an upgrade with three real drawbacks. The battery, the lost flash and the higher price. But I gain stabilization, a new dust removal function, smaller size, better dynamic range, better low light, I can use Lightroom, new controls, the new metering mode, USB-C charging, touchscreen, internal memory, the list goes on and on. In short, I love it. That's it! Please subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming videos and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye!